This is Deb Moore of the Veterans History Project through Grand Valley State University. Today is August 13th, 2015. I'm speaking with Robert Tacoma at his home in Wyoming, Michigan. Well, thanks for talking to me today, Bob. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about um, where you grew up in, in your mom and your dad and your siblings? Uh, you were Edna, Michigan? No, you, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. It's up by Thelmas, Michigan, up in that. Okay. Okay, so you were born there. Yes. When? August 15. 1921? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, Falmouth. And so, uh, tell me a little bit. You had mom and dad. Yes. What'd your dad do there? Uh, everything from farming to running a construction crew. Uh, crew? Crew, yeah. Okay. Okay. And did you have any siblings? No. No, just you? Just me. Okay, okay. And so where did you go to school? In Thelmas, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And Holland Christian. And then went into military. Okay, so um, did you have to move? Where, where? I'm still not sure exactly where Falmouth is. In northern Michigan? No. No. Where Cadillac is? Yes. We're just uh, east of Cadillac a little ways. And so you moved from there over to Holland, Michigan? Uh, I had an uncle that taught school there, so I did go to school there some. Ah, so you, you left your parents' home and lived with your aunt and uncle? Sort of, yes. Okay. And you graduated from, from Christ, Holland Christian? Yes. Uh huh. And then, then what happened? Did you enlist or did you, um, um, were you drafted? Uh, we was in a, a program for, um, Like ROTC? Something similar to that. When you were in high school? When we got out. When you got out, okay, okay. And, uh, we were around uh, Ann Arbor down in that area. Okay, uh-huh. And so that was a voluntary? That was something you signed up to do? Yes. Okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so uh, they took you in the Merchant Marines? That kind of bounced you around a little bit. Uh, how do I go about this? I, um, well, this is sort of all government stuff anyway. It was, uh, and they sent uh, some of us down to Florida. Uh huh. From there, they we was in a program and went to Boston, and I spent my after high school year down years down there, some working. Okay. Okay. And then Finally, uh, yeah, I don't know how I got involved in the okay. service, but, uh, but but you feel like you chose the Merchant Marines? Uh, it's part of the Coast Guard program. I see. Okay. We were under Coast Guard supervision. Okay. So, uh, Bob, did you have any basic training with that? Yeah. 
No, not basically. No? No. Okay. Um, you read, did you have to report to a ship? No. No? Okay. Uh, from oh, Ann Arbor area, went to Florida, and from Florida, uh, went to school there. To be a radio operator? If I intended this to be, I don't know, but I fell into that program and, uh -huh. and uh, in, during the war I was still in uh, school, so to speak, under the Coast Guard and uh, of course you either enlisted or I uh, went to work for Standard Oil. Mm-hmm. And got aboard ship and sailed the Atlantic. And okay. Okay. Did you enjoy um, being on a ship? Yeah. Uh huh. I did. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, it says here you started in the service in April, April 16th in 1942. Um, um, so you were the radio, radio operator on a ship, um, maybe on the SO Baltimore? Yes. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Okay. So how many guys would have been on your ship? Met lots or? Oh, we... That varied on the ship you were on. Uh huh. Uh, basically, the merchant type of ship prior to the war just had the crew aboard, which would run around 35, 40 men. Uh huh. But then as the world went on, you got more men on there and doubled up watch. Uh, doubled up for the watches and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was your objective on the ship? What were you supposed to be doing? Radio operator. Radio oh. officer. Okay. Or, yeah, radio uh, communication officer, you want to call it that. Uh-huh. And, and as, as a radio communications officer, what were your duties? Oh, monitored the radio frequencies and uh, pick up the weather and any, well, yeah. That was all kind of They knew where we were, mm -hmm. and if they wanted to get in touch with you, they went to put the call letters of your ship up on the uh, menu for the day. Uh huh. Then you'd answer and get your assignments and so forth. Uh huh. What might an assignment have been? What might they ask you to do? What's the weather where you are? <laughs> ask you about the weather, okay. Uh, then keep in touch with other radio stations that monitor the, the frequency that we were assigned to watch and uh -huh. pick up signals and uh -huh. messages. And it was all done in code, of course, uh, or uh, I say code, but it's uh, Morse code. It, well, yeah, it was all done in Morse code, but uh, was it also coded so that the Germans couldn't listen in? Oh no, they could hear you if they wanted to. Okay, and could you hear them? If you wanted to listen to them. 
Okay. Were you supposed to try to locate their position? That was the skipper's job. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that... Uh-huh. Did you ever hear anything interesting? Or helpful to the war effort? Hmm? What about the other radio operators you had working for you? Were, were they... Uh, they only had a uh, maximum of four on their prime time toward the end of the war. And then they, they covered the, the uh, radio station 24 hours a day. Did they? Okay. Keep, keep, keeping track of anything that went on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How did your crew get along? Lost. Along. Did oh. everybody get along pretty well? Pretty well. Mm-hmm. No troubles aboard ship? Okay. Okay. So, so your ship... First, Bob, was out in the Atlantic? First foot ship I took was in the Atlantic, yes. Okay. Went across to England. Run across to England, okay. And uh, from then on, it was, it's been a many, uh, hour and Caribbean Sea, we run the canal and went down to Rio de, Rio de Janeiro. Okay. Run the Venezuela, oh. Trinidad. Interesting thing, seeing the Southern Cross. Wow. That is beautiful. We had good trips down here. So were you able to get off the ship at these various ports then and do some sightseeing? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes uh, if we had to wait for a convoy or mm -hmm. wait for a, you know, a convoy to go, why then we'd be in a like real, we'd be there for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any interesting adventures at any of those stops? Uh, not really. Nothing that really sticks in your mind? Mm -hmm. Okay. So after you were down in South America, then where did you continue on into the Pacific or Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Through the Panama Canal, at least three times. Uh huh. The last time we kept right on going, of course, we went into the Pacific. Okay. Okay. What was that like going through the Panama Canal? Floating down a river. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm not really that familiar with the Merchant Marines. Why don't you tell me? What was the aim? Uh, were you just supposed to show an American presence in the water, or what were you doing? Transporting whatever needed to be transported. Uh, one trip we were carrying aviation gasoline. That was a hot spot. But we just delivered Whatever had to be delivered, mostly along the fuel line, uh, oils and stuff there. I see. Okay. Transported them. Uh huh. Where they needed them. So you weren't a fighting vessel. No. No. But what if you were fired upon? Did you have the capability to fire back? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, but again, that was somebody else's job, but at least you could defend your ship. Um, to a degree. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so tell me about any incidents. Do you remember any specific incidents or stories about your time uh, cruising around the world? Any prompting you can do there? How about the Euphrates River? Oh, that must have been something to see. And the light out in the Pacific. Those are two stories. Okay, tell me first about the Euphrates River. Well, we were coming. Coming. Out of Baghdad, out of the Euphrates. Uh huh. Fully loaded. We were thrown awake that would put vessels up ashore because we were fully loaded and we was moving. Uh huh. And, uh, then came, uh, Well, I was in the off time, so to speak, and I was up on deck looking around and, and uh, heard the ship signal for clearance and we were headed down there and I can't tell you what happened. This this is just from a outsider looking in if I may put it that way. Mm -hmm. But we were coming down and all I can Tell you is what I the man that was supposed to be steering our boat or dragging it was apparently going to put us up on the beach because he we were in a tight spot. Mm -hmm. the skipper took over and. And uh, her call to the wheelsman, our port, and they swung the wheel. And our stern came around, and we just wiped out a little village there. Oh. And people were screaming and wow. dying. I knew, I knew this. This is to stick to my memory because they were jumping off, off the bank to get out of the wheel, way the wheel, and our wheel was just chopping them up as we went through. Oh. Oh, that was awful. That was awful. It's something that sticks in your memory that you don't forget. And, in the skipper took over and took the ship down at a respectable speed, but we were headed down the Euphrates River. So your ship was a little bit too big, too wide for the river. The guy was driving well, a little. It was a rare uh, 
the thoroughfare for the uh, ships going up and down the river. Okay. Well, that was a sad incident. Yeah, it was. Um, did you did you stop? No. We kept we going. We kept on going. Do you think that that uh, captain or the skipper or whoever was driving was reprimanded? I I don't know. Uh -huh. I, I I honestly don't know. I have no the radio communications, but uh, there was no confession on that word. Uh, that he could have been at fault. Yes. Yeah. But Boy. it was a rough trip down. Yeah. And we were sending waves up there, picking up smaller boats and just leaving way up in the beach. It's wow. Way. Yeah. Yeah, a big wake. Big wake is right. <laughs> Tell me about Baghdad. Did you get off the ship in Baghdad? Oh yeah, I well, stopped all around there. It's a nice country, mm -hmm. but this was before they got into this. Was the early war. Uh, a good place to shop, and mm -hmm. they got mother. Uh, I don't know, one string of something there. Some kind of a necklace. No. Uh huh. So you were dating, or you were married, or engaged, or what? I was single, foot free. <laughs> foot free, but you were buying your girlfriend a necklace. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> okay. Um, then later, you saw some kind of a light in the Pacific? Tell me about that. <sighs> I don't. It's a hard one. I don't think. I think we were broke down at the time, if I recall correctly, and they tried to keep our ship going. And uh, more time, you have code signals and so forth. And We would send uh, the recognition signal to uh, another vessel and he'd say the, the, the correct answer. But this one was along the shore down there and uh, we would send recognition, but we'd never get an answer from him. And uh, so then they decided to fire on them. And I started to snap war, right? And uh, yeah, it was a rough deal. The, uh, having trouble with the turret on our ship. The diesel power went out. They were trying to crank it around by time, by hand. And 
good thing they didn't make it or we might not be here. Anyway, we got out of that mess and went home. Who did it turn out you were firing on? Who are they firing on? An enemy ship or a friendly ship? They were supposed to be friends, I believe. Uh, it was right off Whitey area down in there someplace. Uh huh. Uh, but there's so many factors to take into consideration, you know. If they were on a small vessel and the uh, waves were Break it up between the lights, it, it gets kind of hairy. Mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> yeah. So. They had orders to fire on it, and their turret went down, so we were trying to crank it around there. We had a, we suspect it was a, a Navy ship pulled out alongside us and told us, told us to shut up, I guess. Anyway, we got out of there. Okay. That was probably the, I won't say it's a closest. It's one of those. Things. The most dangerous situation you were in? Uh, yeah, because, I don't know, ship broke down or something, we was trying to fix it. Okay. But we got out of there and we got home. Okay. Okay, good. I see all told, um, Bob, you were in the service for three years and four months. Um, um... Did you get to come home at all during that time? Yeah, I I got vacation time and just went home a couple of times. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do you remember anything about those times? Was that fun or a relief or how did you feel? Don't remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would they have dropped you off on shore someplace and you took a train home, or how did that go? Oh, when they, when they, uh, were loading the ship or waiting for a convoy or something like that, we just sit and wait. Keep in touch and slip home if we could. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so, you were all told you were really all over the world. You were in the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Mediterranean, the Middle East. Um, did you really circumnavigate the globe? Did you go all the way no. around the... No. 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 Uh, On the Nile River there, and, and uh, Mediterranean Sea, and coast of Italy up there, and from the Mediterranean Sea, and then we also go on to England. And Uh, we, uh, Did you get over to Australia? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Sounds like you're pretty much all the way around the world to me if you were from Hawaii and Australia. No. Yeah, it sounds like you're pretty much did it. Pretty much around. Yeah. 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 Um, any areas you like the best? I think home is best. Home is best. <laughs> well, probably amen to that, huh? So, um, <laughs> you were on the Baltimore, then the CA Canfield, then the SO Buffalo, um, then the SO Springfield? No. Okay, those are different. Now, why would they have moved you from one ship to another? Well, this was commercial shipping, and if you went in, you were going to lay in port for a while, uh, you just move on and you work for the company, and, and then they'd kick you around and tell you where to go. So, when it says ESSO, you were working for the oil company? Right. Standard I, oil. For Standard Oil? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you got your paycheck from Standard Oil or from the service? I wrote them out. You wrote the checks out. I didn't know the radio operator got to do that. That was good. Well, yeah, you did multiple duties on there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So, did that go well? Oh, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And what did you do when you weren't on duty? What did you do when you weren't on duty and you were out at sea? You were always on duty when you were out at sea. Oh. You must have at least got eight hours to sleep. Oh, yeah. If did you play cards or what'd you do? Well, no, that's an interesting. The radio, uh, okay. As a radio operator, communications. Uh, a lot of times there's nothing going on, or the skipper sit down play cribbage with you or something. Or it just depended. Mm -hmm. So who are your best buddies on the ship? I think that depended on the individual and the, and the situation we were in or something. There was, we were all pretty good. Okay, everybody got along? Generally. Okay. If they got into a fight, fight if we had a first mate that would take pretty good care of them. Oh, okay, because sometimes it would get in, in physical fights? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a, uh, we had one on board from the, the knife to the guy. So we were. city down in that area. Mm -hmm. 
we had a send a message in to sure told my problem. Told him to have a a doctor and police. They met us. Uh huh. Yeah, he did a pretty rough time. Generally, the crew was pretty good. Uh, you know, Little rowdy once in a while, but usually they were pretty good bunch of guys. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any trouble with any of them? Just stay out of their way. Just stay out of their way, okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Any other stories, Linda, we should get? Any convoy stories? You know, you didn't travel alone, you had all these ships protecting you. Because weren't the subs after the oil and trying to blow you up? Weren't you? You've shared a couple stories about soundings for um, submarines and them blowing up underneath your ship. Am I correct? He has some convoy stories, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, tell me those. <laughs> Well, it's, I can't remember. But the Germans were trying to get your ships to get the no, oil? No, they didn't. more stories to our. Well, we got time. <laughs> That's what we need to hear. Tell me. Yeah, but I have to remember stuff, and that didn't, <laughs> that's hard that part. didn't do me any favors. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um. You got down northern Australia, down in there, and The military planes would fly over us and use us for charging with flights and I don't know. <laughs> it's a rough game. I guess. You've shared how um, your boat assignment would be changed and then the, the ship you had been on would get sunk, would get blown up. You have a really fascinating story about the fog and the ship assignment and the Lord just preserved your life. It was like you would get changed to another ship and... Then the previous one, Mel. Yeah. Ill fate. Yeah. yeah, tell me about that, Bob. The worst was too long. You were in there a long time. You were in there a long time. So you think the Lord was looking out for you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Um.
first trip out. We left down to the Carolinas. We went to Halifax, Nova Scotia. We laid off out there. It's too foggy. We couldn't get in. And, uh, Finally got moving in a convoy. We was in the uh, North Atlantic and it was rough. We was in a convoy. And every time the weather cleared, the signals would go up into me. Subs in the vicinity. And, uh, just keep going. Wow. But you made it. Made it. How'd you get in with the fog finally? Did it lift? Uh, yeah. It, it, when you're in a convoy, it's kind of tight, you know. It's, it's, you didn't use radio, you used uh, hand sight. Light. Mm -hmm. but, uh, no visual or no radio contacts at all. Mm -hmm. uh, North America run from Halifax on the seashore and there. Rough weather. It's a rough, rough in the North Sea anyway, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These convoys, um, these would be dozens of ships, or, um... Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. And you had your position, you drove in, and you had to stay in there. Uh-huh. Either way sound or visual way. You'd signal each other to where you had to go or where you had to be or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, so for instance then, when you left the SO Baltimore and got on the Canfield, did something happen to the, the Baltimore? Okay. I probably knew and I probably told Linda about it, but now it's not coming back to me. I don't know me. which one it was. Okay. It okay. happened once or twice. Once or twice, though. Once you get off a ship and got into a different one, the previous one met a, a poor fate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you think, Bob? So you're 19, 20, 21. Like you said, you're free as a bird. You're on your own, traveling the world. Um, was that a good thing in your life? Depends on what you like. What about well, you? What did you like? Saw a lot. You saw a lot, okay. So it gave you an opportunity to see the world. You saw a lot of it, yeah. Yes, yes. yes mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Um, we, uh, we did. Oh, guy, I can't remember. Went to the Netherlands, and then up Finland, up in the, whatever you call it now, I don't know. Up in the Scandinavian countries? Yeah. Uh-huh. 
You're all over the place. I'm all over the place. Uh huh. I'm going to cross to the world. Were we friends with Germans at the time? No. Are you sure of that? That we weren't friends with the Germans? Well, we were at war with them. Uh, no. What about day to day? Did you in any way enjoy what you're doing or did you think, oh, I was sure I wish I could get off this ship and go home or what? Can't answer that. Can't answer that if you liked it or not. Do you think it made you mature? I think you grew up a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you get much mail from home? I don't think so. What about, um, do you remember the end of the war? Yeah, it was on my birthday. On your birthday, okay. Uh, I saw... Your, uh, your 24th birthday, you got out. It was on the date line. Ah. So it was either the day before or the day after, but uh, <laughs> uh, it was on my birthday, August 15. Uh huh. And uh, I saw the Japanese and American leader at that time meet and sign. It was right at the end of the war. It was, it was over about. You saw that in person? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cool. That was Hirohito? Don't know what Oh, no, your memory, I can't. Yeah, I don't know either. But you saw that in person. That was cool. Yeah, it was. So, um,. You got you got home. Did you ever use the GI Bill? No. No. What did you do with all your money you were making while you were in the service? Did you send it home? I suppose I did. Yeah, you had a little nest egg when you got home. I don't remember. Don't remember. Okay. Anything else in particular we should ask? When he found out about Pearl Harbor, he was sharing, we were just talking this morning. Um, do you remember when you first heard about Pearl Harbor? Yeah, I was in the bunk on a Sunday. And they announced it that they, they had attacked us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, they did it. He was in radio school when it. Oh, so oh, you were you were in the Merchant sort of Marines before the war started. Yeah. The Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. You remember that? Oh yeah. And then you got into high gear. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Um, Bob, just kind of in closing here, we're almost done. Um, did you have any um, lasting effects? Do you think of the war? I mean, did you did you have bad dreams? Did you um, any anything like that? How do you think it affected you? I. I lay awake at night thinking of it once in a while. Uh-huh. Uh, we went around Philippine Islands there and 
busted up a camp and smashed their boats and everything else. And, oh, we were a reckless bunch. But we were under, I imagine, the ship commandments, commanders, and the convoys and stuff like that. Uh huh. Do you think, and again, I don't know much about the Merchant Marines, do you think that? Was it your impression that as merchant marines you had a little more um, freedom or it was a little looser than perhaps if you had been in the Navy? I think so. Uh huh. I think so. But then the Navy had the privileges that we don't do. So. Uh huh. Like what kind of privileges? Well, what? They, they were a unit and worked together. Uh-huh. And we were kind of a I don't know. I I I have been thinking about that lately, huh? Uh huh. How what controlled what we did. I, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I I don't know. Okay. Got us over with. Right. You were under the Coast Guard. That was his okay. discharge came from the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Anything else, Bob, that I should know about your time in the service that, that I haven't asked you about, that you want to tell me about? Well, Could remember, but nothing in particular sticks out. How about you, Linda? Anything else that you can remember that you've talked about? Okay. Going across to Australia. I mean, you were from Australia to Finland to the Philippines to Venezuela to Hawaii. I mean, yeah. England. Huh? Baghdad. Baghdad. Down you were at, it's up the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal. You were everywhere. Oh. That was fabulous. Mm -hmm. You got to see the world, that's for sure. Yeah. From the deck of a ship. Yeah. I've had my experiences. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So you got out of the service, you came home, and then what did you do for a career um, for the rest of your life? Oh, started a little business. Ended up working for Oliver Machinery and being superintendent there for a while. Uh huh. That was about the end of it. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Okay. Good. And you had a couple kids. You had Linda. Yep. Anybody else? Diane. Diane? Yep. That was my contribution. <laughs> <laughs> contribution to the world. That's nice. What was your wife's name? Madeline. Madeline. That's nice. Okay, good. Well. Yeah. Uh, the fellow that introduced me to Madeline. I was just thinking about him the other day and how oh, I messed up and had, had a chance to talk to him and didn't see how he was doing. That's too bad. 
Yeah, and it is. Uh, the world goes on and you kind of push people aside. And some of them get in your way and you just go your own way. There's a lot of things we can do that we should do together. And, oh, I don't know. So you kind of regret that you didn't reconnect with him? Yeah. I could talk to him. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Well, thanks for talking to me, Bob. I appreciate it. Thanks for your service. Oh, yeah. That was a long time, three years and four months. It was.